Today we are looking at a leveling guide to get your dual crafting skill all the way to the cap of 100 in Dragonflight. It is important in Dragonflight to have the highest possible dual crafting skill level as with the updated profession system this is one of the biggest factors in determining the quality of what you produce. Now this is not going to be as easy as in previous expansions, you can't just sit down and do it all in 10 minutes mass producing a couple of items like you used to be able to do. Additionally, you don't want to be mass producing the same items either because each time you craft something for the first time you get a bonus and this includes a dual crafting knowledge point. These are basically the talent points in the new profession specialization system and essential for your long term progression. Therefore, this guide is designed to hit as many of those one time bonuses as possible. So we should have 21 out of a possible 22 first time crafting bonuses by the time the initial part of this guide is over and we're finished with a profession trainer. I'm about to show you a scary list of materials to get your dual crafting skill to 50 and to learn everything from the profession trainer. Before that, I just wanted to say that you need quite a lot of awakened elementals to level dual crafting. These drop from mobs within the Dragon Isles and I've already scouted out the best farming locations and put them in video format for you. If you're watching this video immediately on release, those videos won't be out yet, but they will be coming soon. So yeah, if you want them farming locations, you want to keep the price of your leveling your dual crafting as low as possible, then just farm these yourself and just follow those farming videos, which will be out soon. Now, before you go buying any materials, watch this whole video because this can be done cheaper if you've got a little bit of patience and you're willing to do it over a few days. Our approximate list of materials to initially get our dual crafting skill to 50 is 8 rousing fire, 8 rousing earth, 2 rousing frost, 2 rousing air, 2 draconium ore, 4 severite ore, 4 chromatic dust, 5 draconic stoppers from vendors, and 25 misshapen figurines from vendors, 3 queen's ruby, 6 crumbled stone, 17 fractured glass, 12 silken gem dust, 6 mystic sapphires, 2 vibrant emeralds, 6 sundered onyx, 9 eternity ambers, 20 nosdorites, 1 awakened air, 1 awakened fire, 1 awakened frost, 1 awakened earth. We need 17 of one of these awakened elementals to get us to 50 skill, but you need to pick whichever is the cheapest or the best for you to farm. The big stack of nosdorites and all the awakens are the expensive bit here, but that's right at the end of the leveling process, so you can just get started now and do that bit later on if you can't afford those straight away. Now I've listed here gems, fractured glass, silken gem dust and crumbled stone as materials we need. All of these come from prospecting ore and crushing gems, which you will do with your dual crafting skill and that's actually going to take you up to 10 dual crafting skill. This will be cheaper than buying all the materials directly from the auction house, so yeah, grab your stack of severite and prospect and crush gems until you get the materials you need. Now I said approximate list of materials, there's some degree of RNG here when you're dealing with profession skill ups, so you may get lucky and it may be a bit less or it may be a bit more. Once we've finished this part of the profession leveling process, we'll talk about what we can pick up in Dragonflight to get us all the way to the cap of 100 dual crafting skill. Now all of this was filmed on the beta, so it's possible that changes may have occurred, but at this point it's so late in the beta, hopefully nothing drastic should have happened. We are starting at dual crafting skill 10 then, and we've got this from prospecting ore and crushing gems to get our raw materials. So we're going to craft a solid eternity amber and then do some training. Then craft a glossy stone, four shimmering clasps, energized vibrant emerald, zen mystic sapphire, craft three frameless lenses, and then head back to the trainer. Make a crafty queen's ruby, a senzai sundered onyx, a band of new beginnings, and a pendant of impending perils, and you can train again. Craft a draconic vial, bold print bifocals, chromatic focus, left handed magnifying glass, and a sundered onyx lupus. You should now be at around 27 to 28 dual crafting skill and heading back to the trainer. Make a revitalizing red carving and then you're going to use your daily cooldown of time watchers patience. As a note here, this is where we can really save some gold in leveling up our dual crafting skill. Time watchers patience is a daily cooldown and that can take you all the way to 65 dual crafting skill. Therefore, every day that we use this, you're saving having to craft a gem that's costing you an awakened elemental and an Osterite. 
This cooldown gives you Nosterites every day as well, which is what we are needing in mass quantities to level up our skill. So if we take our time leveling over several days, we can get loads of free skill points and then we don't have to worry about the Nosterites. The only problem then is the awakened elementals that we need. You should hopefully now be at 30 skill and be able to train the Nosterite gem cuts. You definitely want to be making one of each of these, so that's four Nosterites and one of each of the awakened elementals. The materials I put down will get you 50 skill, but you can actually cut these gems all the way to 80 skill if you want to. Overall what this means is that if you're willing to be slow and steady leveller who is willing to farm their own awakened elementals and use your daily cooldown, you can push your dual crafting skill all the way up to 80 fairly cheaply. If you want to just buy everything and blitz it, then this is going to be extremely expensive at the start of Dragonfly. As a note here, you can also make elemental halving as well that you've learned from the trainer and that can take you all the way to 75 skill, but it's so much more expensive than cutting gems, I didn't really consider it as an option for levelling up. Anyway, let's have a look at the options to get us to 100 dual crafting skill. If you know 100% for sure what you want to do with your dual crafting knowledge points, then you could do it and unlock a lot of recipes that will push you to 100 skill. Say you wanted to be a specialised epic ring crafter. I mean, it worked for legendaries, didn't it? You could put 10 points into setting to unlock jewellery, and then 10 points into jewellery to unlock rings. Once you have unlocked rings, you learn to craft the Signet of Titanic Insight, which is an epic ring that would take you all the way to 100 skill. You could do the same with necklaces or with cutting epic gems. All of this will give you 100 skill with enough crafts, but the earlier you use your knowledge points, the less opportunity you have to sit back and see how the market develops. So let's have a look at some other options. In Dragonflight, we have the return of epic gear recipes that seem to be random drops and are tradable on the auction house. At the time of writing, we have no idea how rare these will be, but it might be worth checking out the auction house to see if you can pick any up. For dual crafting, we have recipes for both an epic ring and a necklace that we can craft. So if you can pick any of these up cheaply, it may be worth the effort because both of these can take you all the way to 100 dual crafting skill. Probably the most common way people will level up their dual crafting is from recipes they get as reputation rewards. What's to follow isn't every recipe you can get from reputation, it's just what I think are the most relevant ones for getting your skill to 100. In this list I've included all the gem cuts you get from reputation as well. Now these do cap at 80, exactly the same as the Nazarites that we learned from the profession trainer. I've included them all as one, it's useful to know where to get them, but two, because being able to cut a different rare gem is just better for your levelling. You can use different raw gems, and the prices on those Nosterites are going to be terrible as everyone is going to be spam crafting them for leveling. Anyway, let's have a look at what reputations you want to be going for as a dual crafter. The rewards we are concerned about when it comes to leveling up our dual crafting skill come from Dragon Scale Expedition and the Iskar Tuskar. At Renown 9 with the Dragon Scale Expedition we unlock 4 new rare gem cuts. Like I said, these cap out 80 skill, but it gives you a lot more variety in what you can craft and hopefully these gems will be cheaper as well. At Renown 13, we unlock the ability to craft the Idol of the Earth and the Idol of the Lightbringer. Both of these you'll need to use the Work Order system to craft for other players, but they will take you all the way to 100 dual crafting skill. When you hit Renown 15, you can now craft the Magnificent Margin Magnifier, which is a profession gear for scribes. Once again, you need to use the Work Order system, but this will also take us to 100 skill. Moving on to the Iskar Tuskar, and at Renown 10, we unlock four more rare gem cuts. Just like before, these cap out at 80 skill. At Renown 15, we get crafts for the Idol of the Dreamer and the Idol of the Spellweaver. Like with the other ones that we got from the Dragon Scale Expedition, you need the Work Order system here, and it will get you up to 100 skill. Then with the Tuskar, we unlock two more pieces of profession gear. One for Inscription, and one for Enchanters. Once again, both of these will take us all the way to 100 skill with enough crafts. Overall, what we have here with dual crafting is a situation where, compared to the other professions at least anyway, you can get to around 75 to 80 skill fairly easily with the rare gem cuts. From here though, things get more difficult. We can use our knowledge points to unlock something or blow some gold on some rare drop designs but probably the most realistic approach for most people is going to be to hit the reputation grind. What we can unlock with a reputation gives us plenty of options to allow us to get those last 20 to 25 skill points that we need to cap out dual crafting. Whatever route you decide to take to get your dual crafting leveled up in Dragonflight, I hope this video has helped. Thanks for watching guys and see you next time.